Cheers, hi everyone. Um, and welcome to Senate House. If you haven't been here before, actually I just want to say uh, this room, if you haven't been here before and you don't know, actually is very historical. So take a, just a quick moment to have a look around because during the Second World War, this was the uh, uh, Ministry of Information and a certain George Orwell worked here for that period and um, he subsequently wrote 1984. And so Senate House became the Ministry of Truth. Did you know that? Yeah, you'd learned something. And incidentally, over the road there in the beverage hall, that's um, where the beverage report, I'm sorry, the Macmillan Hall, that's where the beverage report was uh, uh, launched. So again, in 1944, that's quite a seminal moment in education history. So again, next time you're crumbling, uh, there's cake crumbling on the carpet. And so have a look around in the room. It's quite historical. Anyway, welcome, everyone. Have you enjoyed the day? Uh, I've certainly enjoyed the uh, presentations. Uh, Martin Sepian asked me, what was the one you enjoyed best? Uh, is the Microsoft guy here still? Is he here? Because I, I think Microsoft must have uh, seen me as the user profile when they made that film. Because the one image that I enjoyed the whole day, I know we've been talking about technology and there's been loads of fantastic presentations, but the one image was of the plane. And that woman on the plane, who travels like that anymore? I've been doing so many flights in the last couple of weeks and my experience of aeroplanes wasn't like that. Did, <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, do wave when my five minutes is, you know, I, I can get through this, don't worry. My, my talk is about personalisation and the digital, digital divide. And it's, I think what I'm kind of trying to convey here is that, that in the future, the future of technology in ed education is going to be divided between providers, organisations that understand and are able to deliver on personalization and those that don't. Um, and I'll go on to explain, but, oh, beg your pardon, hang on. Okay, the, um, just a few days ago on the champs list, is anyone on the champs list here? On the ILT champs list, oh, just one. Oh, there is a couple. Well, it's an excellent national mailing list and uh, this person, posted uh, 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 an email saying, we're having an IOT IT strategy group meeting and we're planning the next five years. Can anyone help on what's going to be happening in the next five years? And, and what was interesting, he, he said, thinking ahead in five years is a scary process. And, uh, and it got me thinking about, well, actually, it probably is, unless you start thinking back 10 years or five, 10 years, and then it's not so scary. Um, if we, the, the questions he asks, I think, are quite interesting. How do we see the terrain, sort of how will it map out? Will v VLEs have withered away? I think that's probably James Clay uh, uh, being mischievous again there, um, being a bit provocative. We, we, we can get his kidney afterwards, OK? But uh, will online resources mean the end of traditional library provision? Will ILT be taken for granted? Well, quite interesting. If I start, I mean, we're in 2010 now, and I started kind of with JISC as an advisor about 10 years ago, uh, just over 10 years ago. And um, um, I'm asking for you to contribute to Twitter on this, because if you've got any stories, if you, if you remember 10 years ago, uh, uh, the, in those times, Lots of, uh, we don't do technology here. I mean, and that was proclaimed. People were sort of proud to say, no, not interested, don't do technology. Um, we're also, e-learning was uh, around, but it was uh, only done by sort of universities who were in, involved in distance education, remote learning. Um, it wasn't something that we talked about, uh, or not very much anyway. Will VLEs take off? Bector, I think, uh, if Rob's still here, Bector was giving each learning provider in post-16 £24,000 to go and buy a virtual learning environment, if you remember that. And, and, and people were going out and buying these things and not knowing what to do with them. 
plugging them in. So the question was, will they take off? And there was an ILT Champions programme, and it was an excellent programme, but it really focused... Uh, what ILT was in those days was about supporting practitioners' use of technology in the classroom. Um, anyway, so if we move five years on, uh, how have we sort of seen things changing? Well, lots of still, I'm afraid, uh, we don't do technology. They're not so proud of the fact, I think more uh, probably ashamed of the fact now, because we are moving over to using uh, or utilising technology, but there's still resistance there. Um, still, and there's still a confusion over the terminology that we're trying to use. E-learning is definitely coming on the scene now, um, but there, you, you ask different people what e-learning means and you'll get different answers. Uh, still the question, will VLEs take off? They're more utilised now, but I think in two, three, five years ago, they were very much a repository of resources. Um, and, and, and a little bit of information, not much more. Very little learning or education or, or, or learning going on there. And there were rumours of personalisation. I remember going to an ACL conference in 2004 where a government <coughs> spokesman first uh, 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 cited this uh, idea of, of personalisation, and it was really exciting, actually. I think very good. I can't remember it, but I will put it onto um, a, a link to the slide so you can have a look at that. And in 2005, of course, it was the launch of the uh, harnessing technology, which certainly focused on personalisation. And 2005, of course, big, big growth in open source technology. I think in education, uh, organisations were still nervous of using open source because of the support issues. Um, just the irony of it now, really. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I'm not going to go on about open source. It's there and it's established. And now um, we see in London, at least, post-16 education, not over 90% of the providers use open source technology now. And, of course, ULCC started. How am I doing? Oh, oh the personalization, just in case. In simple terms, personalized learning is the route to raise quality and equity in our education system. So what this is talking about, harnessing technology is a quality-driven agenda, and I think that's the key. It's about quality of teaching and learning. It's about the equity of teaching and learning. By the way, does anyone recognise that quote, who it comes from, who said that? Not Miles, because he read this earlier, but anyone else? Uh, David Miliband. <laughs> Obviously, his uh, campaign team didn't pick up on that, otherwise he would have won the election. I'm sure he would. Um, in also, I dug up in 2005 uh, uh, something that I did with VLE user groups in London region. This is the one for Moodle. I couldn't find the one for, for Blackboard. Uh, and and LearnWise, I think there was only two even in 2005. Um, we, what we did is we took the Inspectorate framework and we asked all the Moodle users to grade themselves and we took an average. Uh, so grade one is outstanding. Uh, grade five is very weak. And what's interesting is that they actually averaged out at a satisfactory. Uh, one that was unsatisfactory is how VLE is being used for assessment um, that, uh, or monitoring progress. And the other one was uh, the leadership. Uh, I think surprisingly, they, they argued to have that at satisfactory, but there was an awful lot of debate because they were saying e-learning in 2005 was usually given to people as a responsibility, but it wasn't led at, at an organisational level. I think moving on a couple of years to 2008, the first Future of Technology in Education event, um, I spoke at that, and if anyone remembers, I uh, showed uh, this slide, which was um, an expression, if you like, of the ULCC. Uh, James Ballard, myself, and the team developed 
an open source framework to deliver, to give to providers to deliver personalization. And it was to, uh, if you like, bring together and integrate virtual learning environments, uh, personal learning plans, e-portfolio, assessment manager, uh, and cloud computing. Um, and we used, uh, at Lewisham College was working with that. Um, and I want to show them, uh, if you don't mind, show you how that's looking today. Do you want to have a look at it? Yeah, do you want to see it today? That, just given that that was the actual model that we were planning in 2008, this is just two years uh, down the road, and, and it kind of uh, makes you sort of think, five years isn't such a long time when a college can turn around... Um, when, when a college can turn around something like this, uh, it's, it's phenomenal. Let me just um, um, log in. So that was we were using Oliver Twist as a as an example. Um, I'll go in and just log in as Oliver Twist, and this is live site. Sorry about this. I should have had this all prepared, really, shouldn't I? But uh, I think, like Matt showed, I'm a teacher. I've, I've always been a teacher, so I'm dead scared of technology, and I, I kind of get nervous around it. But anyway, so I um, hope it... Well, yeah, here we go. Here we have Oliver Twist. And I only just noticed... Um, I only just noticed this. Someone pointed it out the other day. Uh, a nice land... Troubled background, arrested for shoplifting and fragrancy. I've always seen that. <laughs> I, I've always seen that as vagrancy. That's my, that's my dyslexia for you. I've never read it until someone pointed it out after drinking a bottle of perfume. Fantastic. <laughs> so let me just log in as Oliver, and you'll see now what this uh, learning portal or the learn zone looks like in, in reality. That's, uh, that's me in, or us, uh, we're into Lewisham as, as Oliver Twist. Um, I don't know if it's still there, but the other day, uh, I, I tell you, every time I've logged on, they've had loads and loads of users on there. It doesn't matter what time of day I log on. So, but anyway, here's, here's, um, uh, the idea was that the college wanted to use it like a BBC website, so some of this stuff is actually pushed out to the student, um, and they cannot change that. But if, if Oliver wants, he can bring stuff in that he wants to use. So he's got, uh, there's no sort of argument about cloud technology. If he wants uh, to check YouTube or Flickr or whatever, he can log in. It, it's all going to be single sign-on. Um, but the other thing, this is the really smart thing, is that he can go in and just check his uh, personal development plan. And those teachers amongst you who used to do this on a paper-based system realise just how much benefit uh, individual learning plans in, in a digital way uh, offers us. And I think Matt... Um, to go back to his presentation, it's quite interesting because my experience is in post-16 is that teachers are really enthused by this stuff, but they're frustrated by the organisation. It's not that they don't want to use it, it's just the organisation doesn't really kind of lead or manage it terribly well. Uh, so I think practitioners just need a chance. Um, interestingly, last year, Oliver Twist was a, an exceptionally good student, an A-grade student. This is real stats, and we've anonymised it, and we're pulling it through and showing it. So this is live, it's dynamic, and it's real. Unfortunately, Oliver Twist number two, this year's Oliver Twist, isn't such a grade A student, and you can see they're having real problems even four weeks into the term uh, that this guy needs some help and support if he's going to last to uh, Christmas. But then that's, I think, uh, uh, the power of this type of system. As a tutor, as a manager, I can go in and get reports on whole groups of students and identify immediately where I need to target support. I can, as a manager, go into groups of courses and see which courses are using targets 
and which courses aren't. So I can uh, focus and target staff development to those tutors that need a bit of support to use the system. Um, Lewisham College, incidentally, said one of the surprises for them was how well uh, the individual learning plan meant that students took on management of their own learning. Um, from the outset, uh, Lewisham is interested in setting up temporary accounts for all students that show interest or, or interview for a course, like Amazon or something, every time you log on to this site, it will welcome you and it will uh, tell you what's going on and you can even go in and do taster courses and you can do uh, uh, learning activities and build a community way before September and the course actually starts. And that does wonders for retention and success rates because the students that are most likely, the Oliver Twists of this world, who are most likely to fail, are probably those that turn up in September and ask if you've got any places left. Was that a wave? It is a wave. Um, I, I, I wanted to go in... How long have I got left, Tim? No, none. Um, <laughs> Look, I, I mean, I really wanted to go in and show you some other stuff around ePortfolios, because one thing, I don't know if I've mentioned uh, or heard today any mention of ePortfolios, and, and I, I, honestly, the, the pilots that we're doing with colleges at HE and FE level uh, have been phenomenally good with ePortfolio use. If I quickly go back to my presentation and finish that off, wherever I was... Uh, right, so, oh, I did it again, sorry, sorry about that. Going back to the um, email list, champs list, uh, some replies to his email, which is a bit tongue-in-cheek, but actually thinking of future of technology and education, the replies that we got from the email list were... <laughs> uh, champs will be run by... And they put an actual corporation there. I can't write it for legal reasons, but you can guess something like a fast food joint or something. Or, you know, education be outsourced by Murdoch and provided through Sky. But the, I, I think the best one for me, students will have handheld devices that staff will never get to see or play with. You can imagine, you know, can I have a look? And the students go, no, 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 you go, go away, go away, sir. But, okay, look, the digital divide. I think the two challenges we face in terms of future of technology and education is, I, I don't know, I've got no embarrassment with using the term of 21st century learner. And I think it's actually those that understand that term, uh, really understand that term, and able to facilitate it as an organisation and transform are those that are going to be uh, pushing ahead with this game. Uh, I think we've seen some wonderful technology displayed today. The real problem is how we're able to apply it because the future isn't about the technology, it's about uh, the culture, the transformation of culture in our in our organisations. And Lewisham is an example of that because I would say to you why they're so successful is because they made a decision at the senior management level. Their focus is on solution, not on the technology. They're learner-centric. They're not developer-centric. And it works for everyone. They got everyone involved. And, I mean, I was talking to a, a, a lady whose colleague, she said, even the cleaners are involved in this sort of solution. Uh, and I think that's uh, the, the, the future. OK, well, thank you very much for listening. And uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>